Okay, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a repeating pattern in Photoshop. Okay, to start off, I've got a drawing already in here, uh, something I just downloaded uh, from the web. You can really start using any photo in this, uh, or you can draw a pattern in here or something like that. Um, anything will work, but I kind of like using a high con contrast image for my uh, pattern. And so the first thing I want to do is uh, I kind of want to address this as a, as a scan that you might bring in in case you've got uh, an image you want to just kind of uh, grab from a photo or whatever. And a lot of times when they'll come in, they won't be a great or a perfect black and white. So we're going to convert it into a, a better black and white. So I'm going to first I'm going to zoom in just on the area where I can see both black and white up close. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to use my layer adjustments for levels. Now that's in here. I'm going to use my black point and white point to convert this to a nice uh, clean black, black and white image. So grabbing my black point first, I want to convert this gr dark gray into a black, but I'm not going to grab just any gray in here. I want to actually grab a gray that's going to be a little bit lighter than, than some of the other tones in here. It's probably coming right at the top here somewhere. Look at that. And all I want to do is just want to make sure that when I'm looking at this that I'm not seeing any area that's just kind of modeling or some uh, stray pixels. If I'm worried about that, I can actually come in here and grab a slightly lighter one. And you'll see that that'll actually convert it to even a darker black. So when I go to my white, I'm going to do the same thing. I want to click on an area that's not quite the lightest white. And just check it over again, see if I see any pixels showing up anywhere. And once I get it converted over like that, we should have a good, clean image. Close this back out. And go view, back to 100%. Okay, so looking at this, it looks like it's pretty good, uh, but I can actually double check it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this file and flatten it. Once it's flattened, I can use the magic wand tool to kind of check it to see if it's a, if I've done a pretty good conversion. And the way I do that is I, I make this uh, make sure it's a, a point sample. My tolerance is set at zero, uh, contiguous, and I'll click in the upper left-hand corner where it's white. I make that selection. What I want is I want to make sure that the uh, the pixels are not, there's none of the pixels kind of floating out here in space. If there were, that would mean that I've got some pixels out there that are not quite pure white. Um, as you can see, it's, it's staying pretty close to around the edge of the border. It could be a little bit better possibly, but it's good enough for this demonstration. So deselect it again here. And then I'm actually going to, uh, I've got a lot of white area around the edge of my photo, um, around this, this object, and I'm going to trim that up just a little bit. So we go to Image and Trim, and that's going to get rid of all the excess white area. You say top of uh, pixel or bottom right pixel, it'll be the same on this one. So it just gets rid of all the excess. That doesn't get rid of any of the drawing. That'll make it a little bit easier for me to, to manipulate that. So I'll say Select All, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. Now, a new document, when it comes in, it's going to be the size of whatever you copied. So this is how big my, my artboard was here. But uh, you want to make sure that whatever that it is that you've got, if your new document is going to be a square. It can be a square of any size up to 1024 by 1024. Anything smaller than that will, will work. So I'm going to make this one the maximum size, which is 1024 by 1024. And I'm going to go ahead and name it now, just so it's a little bit easier to, to handle. Uh, I'm going to call this Carl's Custom Patterns. I'm leaving it kind of generic because I could actually use this as a template for later to create new patterns and save myself a little bit of time. So I say OK. And it should pop up with this nice new document. OK. From here, uh, we've got the square. We want to just uh, kind of, we're going to drop some guides on it and kind of divide it out into four squares. So you say select all, and I'm going to get this selection all around the whole box, and I'm going to use that for dropping my guides in. So if you uh, if you have your rulers up already, or if you, uh, actually if you don't have your rulers up already, you can go to view, and then rulers. Mine are up already, so I don't need to select it. And then you click on the ruler and drag it, and that'll drag a guide out for you. So I'm going to drag it to the edge here and to each one of the edges of this square. To get to the side uh, edges, I'm going to use the side ruler. And 
And then after I got those in there, I'm going to actually draw another guide out right to the middle of the box. And it should kind of want to snap into the middle of the box. This computer's running a little slow, but you can see it kind of snapped in there. And then I'm going to do the same this way. So I get grabbed onto it there. Okay. I just want to check because this computer is running a little slow. I just want to check to make sure it is actually grabbing the consistent square. So I'm going to drag one selection out here, and I'm just going to move it to this bottom right-hand box. And if they match up, there we go. If they match up, I've got a great, um, I've got a perfect square, and the guides are all lining up in the middle of everything. Okay, so once I've got this done, I've got one more step to do to make this template. And that's to I want to create a triangle. But there is no triangle tool anywhere, so I actually have to start with a square. So I'm going to grab this, this uh, square vector tool, and I'm going to draw right from one of these corner points to the opposite. It'll give me a square. And if your computer's like mine, it'll pop up in this little properties menu. You can just close that because we're not going to use it. And then I'm going to grab on the pen tool over here, and I'm not using it to draw anything. I'm actually going to use it to delete a point. And we can see when I hover this uh, pen tool right over the top of this point over here, it's going to give me a little minus sign. When I click on it, that just means it's going to delete that point. It might pop up in this little dialog too. Uh, don't worry about that. Just say OK. And you can see now it's converted it into a, a triangle. It lines up uh, really well with all the edges. OK, so I've got that all in here. Um, and I still have my, uh, my other photo that I had uh, been working on a moment ago. I still have it copied onto my clipboard. So I should be able to come in and just say edit, paste, and it'll drop it onto this document. And there it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this drawing here to create my repeatable pattern. And I'm not going to worry about it too much, where it's going to, how it's going to come together. I'm going to, I'll make some adjustments on it after this. So what I want to do uh, after I've got it kind of positioned in a rough place where I want to go is I could see my path still showing up in here. I can see my, my drawing, and I can go into my layer and say vector mask. This is different than the layer mask where we can use the vector. And we'll come over here and we're going to say current path because there's one path selected, and that's the triangle. That'll get masked that off and give us this uh, one piece of this kaleidoscope. And now what I want to do is I'm going to take this one piece here, and I'm going to convert it into a smart object. Okay, so once I've got the smart object created, now I can actually take, take this thing and start repeating it around um, with all the, uh, all the different places in here. So I'm going to say this one here. I'm actually going to convert my, black, my background to a slightly darker gray, just so I can see this pattern coming in a little bit better. Okay. I'll take this and I'm going to edit it real quick. So if you double click on that, you can see that it will open it up and edit this, this image. And what I can do now is see my overall image canvas size. So I'll make sure it's going to come in as a square here. We're only going to use half of it, but we still want it to be a square overall. Okay. And now I can take this pattern and I want to just move it up to give my to fill this whole space. So if I move it right now, it's actually going to move my triangle and everything. Because uh, you can see they're they're tethered over here. I want to detether it by clicking on the little chain link here. Now I've got just the one. I just want to make sure that I don't have the mask selected. I actually have just the uh, the image itself selected over here. And I should be able to take my move tool and move this image up. Wherever I want it to be, that'll still give me a little bit of light area in there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay. And I'm just going to get away from that one edge right there, just because I don't want to bleed off my document. Okay, so once I've kind of got it set where I want it to be, 
I'm going to go ahead and close this document and it'll ask me if I want to save and I'll say yes, save. Okay, so I just need to make a little adjustment to it because I changed the size of my uh, canvas in there. I just need to move this back to that point. Okay, well, it snaps in there. I'm in good shape. There we go. You saw when it snapped in there, these both of these lines lit up to, to kind of a pinkish color. That means I'm dead on. So after this, I'm going to go ahead and, and take this and start flipping it around and copying it in places where it will start to make our kaleidoscope pattern. So I'm going to click on my layer here and make a copy first. So I have two of them now. And now I can go under my Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And I'll take that layer and just move it, uh, flip across the uh, axis. And then I'm just going to use my Shift key and hold it and drag it across to the point. So it's kind of mirroring our original. So I'll make sure that is, in fact, snapping. There we go. A little bit finicky. OK. OK, now that I've got those two set up, I'm going to uh, make things go a little bit faster. Rather than doing them one at a time all the way around here, I can click and shift click and grab both of those layers, drag them down and copy them. So now I've got four layers, two selected. And say edit, transform, flip vertical this time. Now shift click, drag those down and line them up again with a center point. There we go. Things light lit up. Kind of start to see this pattern showing up. And now I'm going to click on the top layer here. So I just get that one uh, selected and then shift click on the bottom layer and that'll get all four of them. Click, drag them down here to make a copy. Got a copy of these four. So then I can just say edit, transform, rotate 90. So then I've got this symmetrical pattern showing up all the way through. And looks uh, kind of cool. I'm going to come back to my uh, layers here, just move down and turn my background back to white. I don't need to be gray anymore because I could leave it gray. It doesn't look too bad, but back to white there. So now I'm going to uh, grab a texture that I can bring into uh, um, into Photoshop and show you what how to actually create this pattern and do some different things with it that might be kind of fun. I'm going to grab grab a denim pattern here with my image search. And then my search tools, size, and I'm going to see if they've got one that's exactly the right size. So I'm going to say 1024 by 1024. May not, but it's, it's always worth a shot here. OK, they actually do have some in here. Now, ideally, I would be getting not only a 1024 by 1024, but I'd getting a, be getting a perfectly repeating pattern. I'm not going to worry about that too much for this demonstration. Um, but if you did want to have it repeat throughout, um, that would be you know something you'd want to look for. Let's see, I'm actually going to go for a slightly darker one here. No, no, I'll go back to that because that was not the right size. OK, view image, copy image. And then coming back into Photoshop, right over my background layer down here, I'll say Edit and Paste. OK, so it doesn't look like it's working quite right yet, but that's OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I clicked on the uh, bottommost layer of my pattern right above my layer two or my, my uh, denim layer. And then I'm going to shift click on the very top one in here, and that's going to grab all of them. And then all I want to do from there is I'll click up on this panel and say, I want to say new group. And I'll just call this pattern. And it's going to take all of the, uh, those layers and just combine them together into a new group. Actually, it looks like I might have missed it here. Hang on a second. All right. If it didn't do that right for you either, well, so you just make sure it's into that group. Okay. 
So it's inside the folder, I can collapse it now, and now I've got just this pattern folder. And what I can do is, um, basically I want to come in here and just, instead of this, this pass through, I'm going to say I want to go to multiply on the uh, this layer here. So now it's going to actually put it right on top of my denim. So that's kind of how you can get your, your images on top of that. And these can be in color, they can be any color. If I want to, this is actually just black, so you're not really seeing it too much. I can change my opacity and go down to like, you know, maybe 60%. And then you can see it showing a pattern in the background, uh, denim showing up a little bit better. I could also apply effects to it if I want to make it look like it's um, an embossed um, pattern on top of it. Get a little more detail in here. Click OK. A little hard to see with the color there. Still want to make sure we're in multiply. Okay. So mine in this case is actually picking up a little bit of the page edge, um, but you can actually uh, fix that by dragging the white out to the whole area. But any effects you want to kind of create to this, um, shadows or colors or anything like that, um, will work. And the cool thing is, is that after you uh, create all this stuff, you can still change up that original pattern. So if I open up my, my uh, folder here and double click on one of the layers, any, of the, any one of the layers, it'll open up kind of what my original pattern was. And so I could take this and just make sure that I've got my layer selected and move it over a little bit. And you'll see it doesn't even take too much to make a big difference on how it uh, comes out in its appearance. I'm just moving it down a little bit and then I can close it. So ask me if I want to save, I just say yes. And it'll update what my pattern looks like. So you can get a whole bunch of, uh, whole range of different um, patterns pretty quickly. Uh, you can actually even take and copy other photos and drag them in here and, and paste them in um, and a live update. So you actually have kind of a template. Um, so anyways, once you've got this done, uh, I'm gonna actually turn off one of my effects here. Go ahead and get rid of that bevel and a boss. Okay. And then you just can save it. Do a save as. Again, I always want to save a PSD version. So I've got Carl's custom patterns.psd to my desktop. Say yes. And then, so that's your working document, but actually the document you're going to place into SketchUp would be a new one would be a save as, and that will be in JPEG format. Okay, so then when you bring this into SketchUp, uh, it'll create sort of a wallpaper pattern. You can come back and edit it, like I said, and more, add more detail to it, uh, repeatable patterns uh, or uh, repeatable textures in the background. Um, but that's uh, sort of the, the basics of creating a repeatable pattern. All right, thanks.